name is John Jones. And I'm Brittany Philippon. This time we're going to be conducting a brief experiment called Blobs in a Bottle. It is an experiment that we're going to be doing with our students. Um, it covers the standard um, SPR2 um, in the science uh, performance standards, Georgia, um, where the students are able to uh, tell the difference between, explain the difference between a physical change and a chemical change. Brittany Philpone will take us through the first phase of the experiment. All right, so step number one, we're going to begin with our oil in our bottle. We're going to fill up the bottle about three quarters of the way with the canola oil. Once your bottle is filled up about three quarters of the way, you are then going to add some water. Now you're not going to add that much water, you're only going to add just a little bit. And right here what you're noticing is the water molecules and the oil molecules are actually separating, they're changing. Now this change is actually referred to as intermolecular polarity. The oil is less dense than the water, therefore the oil is going to remain on top and the water is going to go to the bottom. Which brings us to our next step, Mr. Jones. Alright, so the next step of this experiment has to do with food coloring. This red food coloring has water molecules in it, so as we put the, the red food coloring in it, we are expecting that the water molecules from the food coloring will be separate from the oil, but once it gets to the water, it should dissolve and change the color. Now, hopefully it does that. Let's see what happens. Now, it does take a little minute for it to drop. Let's see, there it is right there. So as you see, the food coloring drops, they keep their shape, okay, because again, the water molecules don't mix with the oil molecules, so therefore, it will keep its shape. And most kids will be excited about this because they're used to seeing red food coloring once it hits the water or liquid, it dissolves and it changes the color of the, the water. But as you see, it doesn't change the color of the oil because they have different molecules. All right. All right, so as you can see, the molecules, water molecules that were in the food coloring is now dissolved to the bottom and have connected with the water molecules at the bottom of the container. Now, the second four phase of our experiment involves Alka-Seltzer. It's the next component. Now, within Alka-Seltzer, you have citric acid, all right? And um, we'll see what happens. So as you can see, they drop to the bottom, and then it begins, it, it creates a chemical reaction. Now, as you see, all right, as we put the Alka-Seltzer in, it creates what you call carbon dioxide, all right? And it causes, which is a gas, which causes it to rise and it has to be released. So the bubbles are coming to the top and those uh, gases are capturing the food coloring. That's what you see rising to the top. So the gas has to be released. So it comes to the top and as it's, it um, releases into the air, the water comes back down and starts to cycle all over again. And the more alka seltzer we put in, the more fizz we'll have all right, to create our own homemade lava lamp. So there you have it. All right. So that's pretty much our experiment.
Anything you have, Brittany? That's it.